So we almost touched on it. We're talking about LeBron and the last two-minute reports and how the Lakers have had some tough ones down the stretch. But Tom Haberstroh actually did the math on this on Basketball Illuminati, the newest episode you can catch today wherever you get podcasts featuring guest Nate Jones, who works for Goodwin Sports Management. But Tom did the math. And do you know, Stugatz, that the Lakers have been involved in, I believe it's 19 last two last two minute report games l2ms right so like they're like games within 5 points i think is the is the criteria in with within the last 2 minutes yes so they've qualified for 19 this season yes they've been they, okay. they well they've had 19 of those games where a last 2 minute report was uh was required put out there yeah. according to the league there were 34 blown decisions by referees in those 19 games or about 1.8 per report of those 34, how many botched decisions helped the Lakers versus hurt the Lakers? 34. 34 botched calls that had to should have been gone the other way. How many Stugats do you think helped the Lakers? I would guess uh I would guess 14 helped the Lakers. Right. So that's what LeBron would have you believe is that they get screwed every single time. Yes. 20 missed decisions help the Lakers 14 hurt the Lakers so we're looking at the L2Ms ladies and gentlemen actually LeBron you're not getting screwed you're actually getting the benefit of the doubt you're being helped yes by the referees in the final two minutes of NBA games and the one time you don't get any help you act like that pretty much (laughs) it is like I it is against the Celtics national TV such an obvious foul on Jason Tatum like we all agree on that and he was having an amazing game and he was of course and these games are big but they're only big because of LeBron I mean he put the roster together well well, they're also in a playoff chase where every team in the Western Conference is bunched up and Mike sure illustrated for us that like these four decisions are the difference between them being in fourth and them being in 13th. Yes, I will- but he's benefiting more than he's getting hurt in the final Correct. two minutes of game. So it's what does he of, have to complain about? It's one, ones that are getting magnified though. Well, and the other thing I wanted to to argue about with you guys yesterday when I'm listening or the, whatever the day that Mike said they would have been 27 and 23. You're assuming that he goes to the free throw line and makes them. True. Right? We're, we're like we're making a lot of assumptions or that if Embiid got called for fouling Westbrook, that that would have. There's a lot of assumptions that are happening here. It's not, these are not cut and dry. They would have won the game. They would have had a great opportunity to. But again, my thing is, Stugatz, NBA has been around 76 years. Now we're crying about missed calls. 76 years. And now it's the end of civilization. Oh, people have been complaining about it. No. officiating for as long as I can but remember. This, we just have more technology, more this, research. So what we, happened Saturday where people were fainting? Oh, my God. Oh, this, this game is broken. I'm like, what absurd. are you talking about, man? Yeah. It was a bad missed call. Get over it. But does location of the game matter in this situation? They were in Boston. Sure. Right. Well, I mean, sure, sure. I think the Lakers-Celtics Saturday ABC game, definitely with, with the stakes riding high for the Lakers, with LeBron – Playing like a, a dynamite game. What you're saying is react that way on a Tuesday. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> against the Magic, right? Against Orlando, Sarah. Are but there... he gets that call against Orlando, yeah. right? Sarah, are there NHL teams that the rest of the league feels like they get every major decision? Like, are there grand refereeing conspiracies in oh, hockey? Oh yes. <laughs> The Maple Leafs are either getting the benefit of the doubt 500% of the time or they're not 500% of the time. In reality, someone did the math. I forget who, but it's just like every other team. Like, the refs are not biased in hockey. Everyone thinks they are, but they're just kind of incompetent. So it's like... What's the sport where everyone says the refs are great? Because I hear about every single sport. There's pickleball ref controversy. People were tagging me in over the weekend. (laughs) I shit you not. I watch the clip 50 times. I I don't know what's happening in this video. I don't watch pickleball enough. But there's controversy in pickleball. You're a pickleball expert. How can you not be watching the video? I renounce pickleball. Why? Because it went too mainstream? It's toxic. Pickleball culture is toxic. People is getting fights. What? Yeah. It's toxic. Yeah, people, you go play yeah. pickleball on a Saturday and the courts are packed. You're getting in fights. People are yelling at you. Yeah. Happened a few weeks ago. I went to play pickleball with Izzy and his boyfriend and, and my boyfriend. Izzy's gay? <laughs> and we got there and it was a absolute shit show 
of, of people arguing over courts, screaming like, oh, you're playing to 21. We only played to 11 here. And then I went again with Lee to a different pickleball court. Like, oh, maybe these people will be more chill. No. First of all, we got our asses kicked by 75-year-olds. Like, they dusted us. Like, 11 to 1. Second Damn. of all, they're, they're just giving you unsolicited advice. They're telling you the rules. They're making It's just so arbitrary. Just let me go and play singles and leave after 20 minutes. It's not. We don't have to take this so seriously. What's going to have to happen, I'm telling you right now, is they're going to need... So they'll convert like a tennis court into a pickleball court, but they'll do it with one to two courts, right? Like there's 16 tennis courts. What they're going to need to do is convert at least eight tennis courts into pickleball courts because it's becoming more popular than tennis. It is. Not like amongst like older people, younger people, middle aged, they love pickleball. It's tennis. You don't have to run as much, you know. There's a pickleball bar in Boston called PKL, and it gets very rowdy. Right there, you wait, go. Are they playing yeah. wait, bar? Pickleball, pickleball I feel in like the everything bar? gets rowdy at a yes. bar in Boston. <laughs> yeah. uh, to be fair, you're not yeah. wrong. It'd be a great thing. Like there's a chess bar in Boston, yeah. and it's things rowdy. get crazy. <laughs> they do. <laughs> the uh, I would say tennis might be the one sport. I, I know there's been some controversy. No, the the, um, the people have a go at the umpires. Yeah, but you have the ball machine. It's technology. Oh, McEnroe. I know. Yeah, but no, now, but, but, but the Hawkeye, technology. Hawkeye, Hawkeye, Hawkeye has changed everything. Hawkeye yeah. has changed but, everything. Oh, yeah, but that's not out. the refs then, right? That's... Oh. <laughs> I was watching the Australian. Yeah, they got like, rid of them. How do they do that? The same. The they say it the same way every time. The same pitch. And I found out it was just a recording. They hit a button. Bolt. Did they really? What? That's yeah. A recording? Oh, wow. Yes. Oh Damn. man. That actually makes me feel a little bit less stupid. No, not my, much though. My childhood <laughs> just ruined that. Unbelievable. How long have they been doing that? I don't think very long. Right, Stugatz? I don't. I don't Not know. Long, no. I, so, so go back to pickleball. Like, does the ball bounce in pickleball? Why yes. Does, okay, I must. It bounces but low, it, right? But it's if it a, bounces outside, like it, there's rules about where you can stand before. Mm. Like you can't hit the ball in the kitchen without it bouncing the first. The kitchen right. is the area close. It's like the crease in hockey. You have to stay out of the kitchen. Hashtag st- get back in the kitchen. Ha ha. Goldie Hawn but- has a career of her own. I'm not going to sit here and allow you to just frame her as someone's mom. Uh, so hey, Hudson's wow. having a moment, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the fire station by my house, they're always playing pickleball. Mm-hmm. But they play it right in front of like the garage door where the fire truck comes out of. And I kind of feel like, what if there's an emergency, man? Do they have to, like, wrap up the net and get out of the way? And it just doesn't seem very safe. Bad positioning. Yeah, man, yeah. for a fire department. I imagine a lot of cities right now are panicking, trying to figure out where in our public spaces can we put pickleball. I, I saw in, in my apartment building, there used to be, like, outdoor basketball courts. They've been replaced by pickleball. You're, any any kind of court-ish space is being invaded upon by pickleball players. There, there are pickleball turf wars happening in New York right now, too, with the courts around West 4th Street. They, oh, wow. On, on Houston, there's been a huge... It used to be a place where people would bring their dogs in the morning and they'd let their dogs run around because it's gated. There's barely any green space in that t- little New neighborhood in New York. Uh, all right. Unnecessary it's just, shot. It's just like, there's Concrete no, there's no room and to do anything. And then the pickleballers showed up, and they took over, and then the dog walkers were unhappy, and the pickleball people are unhappy, and there's a big controversy over it. And the pickleballers, like, I, I see both sides of it, because, look, I love pickleball. I want to play, too. But let's be nice. And I feel like pickleballers are giving themselves a bad rap because sometimes they're just not nice, and they're too intense about it. It's supposed to be fun. Let's all have fun. And this is why you've renounced pickleball. It is why I renounce pickleball. I will still play sometimes, though. I do. I do love playing. When are you gonna play Bill Lawrence? I'll, well, I'll kick his ass. So okay. <laughs> get away from me when I'm about to play Bill Lawrence. No, okay. you, you made and a that's great, why the pickleballers need to chill out. You by made the way. a great point <laughs> earlier. No, old like my dad will mop the floor with anyone in here when it comes to pickleball. He plays three times a week. Like, all people are good at this They're sport. They're so good at yes. it. And they want to just give you so much advice. And I'm like, I don't give a shit about this. I'm doing it for fun. These people are like, oh, well, you got to do this when you serve. And then you got to learn how to dink. And I'm like, dink these. I don't care. <laughs> wow, the second time. Wow. Good for you.